Good evening. I'm David Assad, the Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River. It is 6 p.m. on Thursday, September 15, 2022. We are meeting at one government center in the first floor hearing room. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20, Subsection F, I hereby notify all persons in attendance that this meeting is being recorded with both video and audio devices. Fall River Government TV, Craig Salvador, is recording both the video and audio version. If anyone desires to make an audio, video, or combination recording thereof, please notify me now and I shall make a public announcement of your intention. Okay. Our recording secretary this evening is the lady to my immediate right, Ms. Nina Kruger. Uh, present this evening are permanent members, John Frank, Jim Corkins, Dan Dupere, Vice Chairman Joe Pereira, and alternate member Ricky Sahadi. <coughs> Nina, have all petitions to be considered, been properly advertised and all interested parties notified in accordance with the rules and regulations of the Zoning Board of Appeals in Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A as amended? Yes. I declare the September 15, 2022 regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Fall River open for such business as shall regularly come before it. I remind all persons presenting before the Board including the petitioners, abutters, anyone in support or anyone opposed to the petition, that your presentation should be limited to three minutes. Questions and responses must be directed through the chairman. The board's rules and regulations direct the board to specifically look for information which supports the petitioner's claim. As such, the petitioner should identify and factually support the basis for the petition. I again advise the petitioners and all interested persons that this board is the Zoning Board of Appeals. This board's authority exists pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A and is limited in scope and deals with the use of land as regulated by Chapter 86 of the ordinances of the City of Fall River. Additional permits, licenses, reviews, and or approvals may be required for the specific development and or use which is the subject of the petition before the Zoning Board this evening. The clerks in the building, planning, engineering, water, and licensing departments are competent in the discharge of their duties as clerks. They are, however, not lawyers and are not competent to give legal advice. The action taken by this board has a real and lasting effect upon the title to your real estate. I urge all petitioners to seek competent legal counsel before filing your petitions and after a decision of the board has been made. For example, there is a City Ordinance 2015-11, Section 10-1, requiring site plan reviews. A copy of the ordinance is available at the City Clerk's Office or from the Planning Department. I remind everyone that the Building Inspector is the Zoning Enforcement Authority, and you're here this evening because the Building Inspector has determined that your proposed action is contrary to the City of Fall River's Zoning Ordinances. The City Charter, Section 9-18, mandates that all municipal member bodies develop and adopt rules or policies for public comment. We, as a board, have developed and adopted such a policy, which in short provides for citizen input on zoning board specific matters at the end of this meeting. I disclose that an official copy of the four of the zoning ordinance is available at the City Clerk's Office. One cannot rely on the online zoning ordinance. Are there any questions before we begin? Hearing none, we'll start with Old Business, Agenda Item 01, Abbott and Farm LLC, care of Attorney Thomas P. Killoran, 100 Weaver Street, Map T3, Lot 15. Um, and this particular project, I believe we received some communication from Attorney Killoran, dated September 8th that says, even though he's here, I'll read your letter, Tom. Please be advised that the above captioned matter is scheduled to be heard at the September 15, 2022 hearing of the four of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Please be further advised that my client needs additional time to gather information to utilize in his presentation to the board. Accordingly, we would ask that this matter be tabled or continued to the board's October hearing 
which I believe is scheduled for October 20th, 2022. Nina, is that correct? Yes. And encloses the check for $350 to cover the tabling fee. Uh, so we said if he wasn't here, he was going to have somebody else here, but we have the pleasure of having Attorney Kaloran here in front of us. So we haven't opened this uh, particular petition up. We've taken no evidence. It's still in the administrative stages. That's your request to table it to the October meeting? That's correct, Mr. So Chairman. So the board needs to entertain and act on it. But I'm going to ask you before we get there, is October going to be sufficient? Or do you need more time? And not that we're just coming, coming, coming. I think there may be some people here that are. Yeah. So I'm asking the question whether or not October is going to be the meeting we go forward, or do you need in that addition? Is, that's a very fair question. I, I asked that of my client, and they seemed confident that October would be the hearing that they'd be able to go forward. We, we should have this additional information by then. Okay. Thank you. Um, so for anybody who came in favor or opposed to this petition, there is a motion made by Attorney Kaloran for the purposes of saying rather than go forward and present their petition this evening, they want to table the matter once again to October 20th meeting so they can do more investigatory work and present the board with more information. Um, so the board needs to vote on whether or not we're going to allow them to continue it to October 20th or whether or not we say no, we're not, and either go forward this evening or deny it. So members of the, so is there anybody out there that has any comment on the motion? I will allow if anyone is, a, yes sir. Uh, Joseph Cavallo, 400 Columbia Street. Yes, sir. So I was here in July, and it was continued until today. Today, so we keep kicking the can down the street. It, that, that's it, what you're hearing. The chairman kind of asked Mr. Kaloran if this is it or whether or not there's going to be another one. But to be just in terms of presentation, it's not. It's not your typical petition. It's rather a large petition, uh, kind of complicated. If he needs more time to do it, um, I can understand the request coming through. But I know that you all have been coming on a regular basis, and I want to make sure that I hear from you or the board hears from you before we take any action. So if I may. Yes, please. I want you to continue. So, so uh, <clears throat> July, uh, yep. the day before the meeting, and I, I don't have the date in front of me, um, I called Farnham uh, and whatever the other name is on this company, yep. developer. Abbott and Farnham. Yep. Abbott, thank you. Abbott and Farnham. Um, and when I called, I thought that I might get a receptionist, I'd identify myself, uh, and, and I was a little uh, taken back because it was a Mr. Perez, is it? Uh, Lopez or Perez? Uh, One of the principal's names uh, let me see who is, is yes. Edward Perez. Edward Perez. Edward Perez. Is what Mr. Kaloran is saying is the principal. I'm looking for the articles of the organization. But anyway, go ahead. Please so continue, it was Mr. Sir. Perez that actually answered the phone in his car. Okay. Uh, and I told him that I was a, a citizen of Fall River and interested in, in exactly what the project entails. And I said, gee, you, you know, what are the plans like? And he said, well, we don't have any plans yet. And I thought that was kind of unusual. I mean, <coughs> we're talking 350, 346 apartments. Uh, and <coughs> it was scheduled for that night here. And he said he didn't have anything. So I, I, I'm, I'm not questioning Attorney Kaloran at all, or even Mr. Perez for that matter. But it does seem uh, unusual to me that it would take this long uh, with this many continuances to get some resolution one way or the other uh, and I'm opposed to it. Uh, you're, you're opposed to the continuance or you're opposed to the project? Uh, I, well, both. <laughs> okay. So let's just leave. The only thing that's before the board this evening is the, is, is the motion to continue. Got it. So I'm opposed uh, to the continuance. I got it. So I'll, I'll let whether Attorney Kaloran wants to respond, but let me let the chairman just respond. Um, the petition couldn't have been filed unless there were a set of plans that were stamped and that met the filing requirements. So there obviously was a set of plans that was presented to the board. I can't speak for your conversation with Mr. Okay. Perez, uh, but 
from the outset we've had a set of plans, it was properly filed, and the board has the authority to act. The issue singularly before the board is, uh, Mr. Kaloran representing Mr. Perez, I shouldn't say Mr. Perez, but Abbott and Farnham uh, has said that they need more time to put their presentation together. They've paid a substantial fee to the city for the purposes of having the board review it. Um, I, I shrug my shoulders and tell you, sir, I don't know, other than the board hasn't taken any evidence. I don't, we've reviewed the plan so we can be prepared for the hearing, but beyond that, nothing else has happened. Understood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming out this evening. Is there anyone else in favor or opposed? No. All right. Yes, ma'am. Can I just ask a question? You can ask a question, certainly. You but I don't want to take any evidence, though. No, Go ahead. No, I, I, Could you identify question. yourself for the record? Marianne Prozik. Yes. Uh, the question Can we is, have an address, please? Uh, 2684 North Main Street. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned early on um, when you, you just right. introduced I say us, lots of things. Go ahead. That, that we needed to have evidence or, you know. So the rules. So what, as, as a citizen, you know, what, yes. what do I, what, what do I come up with? Where, do you know what I mean? What type of evidence? So I will refer you to chapter 40, Massachusetts General Law, chapter 40A. Okay. Section 10 that deals with variances. I think this is a special permit. Uh, let me see. Variance and special and, yeah. permit. So you need, so you need to look at two things. For, chapter 40A, section 10. Chapter 40A, Section 9, and the ordinances of the City of Fall River dealing with the Board's authority to grant variances and the Board's authority to grant special permits. Okay. The standards, I would recommend you speak to a lawyer, but if you're going to do, no, no, it, just the Board, I can only do so much as the Chairman. So uh, those are the avenues that Mr. Kaloran is coming before the Board and saying, we think we have something unique with either the shape the soil condition, the topography to get a variance, or we fit into this other category for a special permit that says if it's a finding by the board that it's either not less detrimental to the neighborhood, then the board can make a determination that yes, we can do it. The other thing you need to look at is the ordinance itself and see where this property is located and what the dimensional requirements are and what the parking requirements are. And your argument, either if you're in favor or opposed to this particular project, is tell us why you're being affected by whatever it is they're looking for, yeah. uh, whatever relief they're looking for from the zoning bylaw, and why you're either in favor of it or opposed to it. Okay. And then this board will listen and make a determination, yes or no. Okay. Thank you. Attorney Kalorn, was that a fair assessment of what? Uh, fair assessment. Thank you. We saw, I saw another hand over here. Yes, sir. Hello. Alexander Silva, 263 Pine Street. Um, like Mr. Cavallo, I was at the July meeting where this was scheduled. I was also at the June meeting where this was originally scheduled to appear, so this will be the third continuance. Um, I'm just personally wondering what more information is needed uh, for this proposal. Um, some of you may recall there was a Herald News article a month or so back uh, in which it was brought to light that this the owner marketed this property already for sale, saying it was already zoned with special permits. So if he was comfortable, or if the company, it was comfortable enough to market the property for sale, I'm just wondering why they're not comfortable enough to actually appear before the DBA and apply for their special permitting. Thanks. Thank you. So you don't have I, to respond if you don't want to. That's fair. Then I, I won't. <laughs> Thank you. OK. Uh, thank you. No, I got outside sources, you know, newspaper reports. Uh, I really don't want to take any evidence. Uh, anyway, so we got that. It's still going to be up to the It's going to be up to the board to decide whether or not to grant the extension. Of, so that's what we've got. Is there anyone else? I don't want to preclude anyone from speaking on this particular project. All right, not seeing anyone. Uh, going to get a motion. To, to, yeah, Chairman. go ahead. I mean, in view of the size and the scope and the economic or potential economic impact on the city and other impacts, uh, I think that we need to have as complete of a picture as possible when we do hear the uh, proposal and move that we grant uh, the extension uh, until the October meeting. Okay. I'm going to look to Attorney Kalora one more time. October, you think, is a good date? That is what I've been told, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you. 
So we have Jim Calkins' motion to grant the motion to extend to October 20th, 2022. Do I have a second on the motion? Second. Second, John Frank. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. John Frank. Yes. Jim Calkins. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. Chairman Assad. Yes. So this petition is granted, the petition, the extension is granted till October 20th. So all of you out there that are interested, October 20th, 2022, same place, same time right here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Do you want to do number one now? Sure. Okay. Because that's yours, right? That's that just is. an extension. That's uh, South Coast. Yeah. New business, agenda item number one, South Coast Hospital Group, Incorporated yeah. Care of Attorney Thomas yeah. P. Kaloran. 305 309 317 Hanover Street, map M17, lots 32, 33, and 62. The applicant puts forth a motion to extend the time for relief for a previously granted decision dated November 4, 2021. The applicant wishes to extend this variance relief for a period of six months, commencing on November 4, 2022. November 4, 2022 was the date that the variance was granted. The one year has been running since that time. Under 40A, Section 10, the maximum we can grant a six-month extension. Um, that's where our authority comes from. Uh, so let's let Attorney Kaloran tell us why he needs a six-month extension. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Attorney Thomas Kaloran representing the applicant South Coast <laughs> Hospital Groups, Groups Inc. They were before you last year um, and secured a variance and special permit from the board um, issued in November of uh, 2021. Uh, part of uh, the work that was going to be undertaken under the variance relief that was granted was going to be a demolition of certain structures and those properties that are at issue are going to be utilized for parking. And there is an existing tenant at one of the ex structures um, at the property and they're going through the eviction process. This is being handled by the seller uh, of the property. South Coast does not currently own it. And this has held up South Coast being able to exercise the rights that were granted to them by the variance. Uh, so we're asking this board to grant a six month extension of time. Um, they're optimistic that uh, this tenant will be out of the property and they'll be able to exercise their variance within this six month extension. Okay, thank you. Members of the board, any questions? Is there anyone here that came out this evening in favor of this petition, this motion, or opposed to this motion? Okay, thank you. Uh, motion to? Motion to continue. Motion to continue, John Frank. Do we have a second? Second. Second, second Jim Corkins, and lefty is better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or motion, actually, motion to. It was the motion, yeah. your motion, to Corkins extend. second, to extend it to extend. next month from November 4th, okay, 2022. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, John Frank. Yes. Jim Calkins. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. Chairman Assad. Yes. Okay, so that's... Thank you. You're welcome. We'll go to... Let me get rid of this. Agenda item number two, Janet Harrison, 18 Holland Street, map T21, lot 30. The applicant seeks a variance to demolish the existing single-family house and divide the property into three residential lots waiving requirements for area, lot coverage, <coughs> setbacks, and frontage in an S single family zoning district. Good evening, Mr. Tallman, you identify yourself for the record and tell yes, us what you Yes, good like evening. To do. Uh, for the record, my name is Jeff Tallman from Northeast Engineers and Consultants. Here representing Janet Harrison for the application uh, for a variance that's before you for this property. Uh, which is located on the corner of Holland Street and North Main Street. Uh, the property itself is, it, as you had mentioned, it's located in the single-family uh, residential district. Um, it currently has 28,562 square feet with 94.34 feet of frontage on North Main Street and an additional 230 feet of frontage on Holland Street. When this... Um, when this project was initially brought to me, the, the intent was to come to this board uh, seeking a variance to create one additional lot. Um, in addition, obviously, we will divide the existing lot into, into two lots, creating one additional lot. Um, th there's uh, obviously there's plenty of area and frontage to meet zoning and to do that. The issue with that um, 
proposal was that the location of the existing dwelling, which is a pre-existing non-conforming structure, um, it kind of sits right in the middle of the property. So in order to create a conforming lot with 100 feet of frontage on Holland Street, whether you come up from North Main Street or you come down from uh, the eastern property boundary, it puts you right smack in the middle of the house. Uh, so there's no way to do a, a, a division of this property uh, without relief. So the initial intent was just to come to this board seeking relief, asking for a reduction in the minimum amount of frontage, and create a, a second lot. Since, that, since this has been brought to me, a few things have happened. Janet Harrison, um, who was living in the dwelling at the time, has been, um, she's currently in a nursing home. Uh, it, it's temporary, it's not long term, she's in for uh, rehabilitation purposes, uh, but she's no longer in the house. When she does come home, the house is going to have to be ADA accessible. Um, the, the other issue that she has with the house is, um, within the past several months, this house has been condemned by the building department. So there's a substantial amount of work that has to take place to the house to bring it up to standards. Uh, never mind make it ADA compliant, just to bring it up to standards where it's inhabitable. So, you know, after reviewing that, it, it made sense to me um, in, in looking at this application that, you know, if, if that is in fact the case, um, we should, you know, with the hardship of her having, you know, initially she wasn't planning on putting uh, you know, she knew she had to make some repairs to the house, but not the amount of repairs that are going to be required to, for her to be able to move back home. It makes no sense to try to keep the existing dwelling. Um, but to, to, to raise the dwelling and construct a new dwelling, um, it just, it's going to be, it, it's really not economically feasible for her. Um, you know, given, you know, you can look at the shape and the topography of the lot. In my opinion, it makes sense just to kind of divide this evenly, create three, you know, substandard lots, but they are conforming when you look at, um, you know, wh what we have in the, you know, in the neighborhood, in the abutting area. Uh, they're certainly in, um, in conformity with, the addition, with those lots, which are all, for the most part, substandard. And I know this board has looked at, in the past, uh, projects like this where demolition is involved, and they have been looked look favorable upon granting relief uh, to help out in that situation. Um, so we're just here tonight, again, asking for relief from, you know, due to the uh, topography of the property and the, the lot shape, uh, topography being, you know, if you look at how this property slopes from North Main Street up to the eastern property boundary, there's a 30-foot drop. Um, it goes from like elevation 62 up on the eastern boundary down to about 32 on North Main Street. So there's a lot of factors in play here. Um, in my opinion, the development standard, the easiest thing to do is just stop with a uh, clean slate, come in here, create nice clean lot lines, nice clean lots, and, um, and she'd be able to build a house that, that would be ADA compliant that she could live in have the additional lot, which was, it's my understanding, was going to be for a, uh, um, uh, one of her children. And then the other, the additional lot would actually pay for the construction of, of her house, uh, the reconstruction of the house. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. I agree with some of the things that you say. Uh, you have a large lot. You can get two conforming lots. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be before the board. Uh, the hardships that you're talking about uh, seem very personal uh, to the petitioner uh, and not necessarily dealing with shape, topography, soil condition. You mentioned the topographical change, but you end up with two lots and you'll have to develop whatever where you have lot three where the highest is down to lot one where you have the lowest of 34 uh, feet of the topographical line. Um, we're also... And I know that we've, we've raised, I've raised it before. Uh, under our ordinance 86-34 uh, subsection C, no yard or lot existing on the effective date of the ordinance from which this chapter is derived shall be reduced in dimension or area below the minimum requirements set forth in this chapter. Yards or lots created after such effective date shall meet at least the minimum requirements established by this chapter. So you got that prohibition in the beginning of our ordinances, 
Uh, yes, I agree that this board has the power under 86482 subsection C to grant relief, uh, but I think that relief is, has to be under uh, an application of 40A section 10, shape topography, soil condition, hardship. I understand the condition of the house. Uh, it's probably better to raise it and put a new house up there, but um, you end up with instead of two conforming lots that you can actually get out of this project, your request is for three uh, non-conforming lots. And most of the lots around you, uh, there's a couple of, there's a couple that are, I think, pre-existing non-conforming, but for the most part have greater than the 10,000 and the 8,000 square feet that you're uh, proposing on this particular project. Um, those are just my feelings about it, Jeff. I don't know. Um, well, I, I, you know, in, in looking so at this. So I guess I want you to tell me something about the, how is it that if I can get two perfectly conforming lots, how do I make the transition from that in the prohibition in our ordinance into three non-conforming lots? Well, I, again, I, in looking at past filings and stuff and different I know, but you know the past filings aren't precedent setting for the board. I understand you know that. I, okay. I do understand that, but when I look at school properties, Brayton Ave School, um, the old Henry Lord School. This isn't, this isn't the Brayton Avenue School project. It, I know, but those... There was no shape or soil topography issues there, and, and they were divided into lots that were substandard. Um, due to, uh, I'm assuming, due to the cost associated with the demolition, rehabilitating the property, and making it attractive to the neighborhood. Um, I get that. And that's all we're looking to do on a much smaller scale with this project. Um, I mean, the topography is an issue. Is it directly related to, you know, how, how this is going to be divided, you know, I don't know. But, I mean, there, there is a topographic hardship. The shape of the lot itself would make it, we, we can't create a second standard lot. So we would need a substandard lot for a second lot anyways to keep the existing dwelling. Or if, to keep the existing dwelling, yes, keep, yes. Well, it, it doesn't make financial sense. No. If we're only getting one additional lot to raise the existing dwelling, because there is value there even though it is condemned. It'd be a lot cheaper to fix that up than to... to I was trying to figure out if I was heading, if I was heading uh, west on it, if I got the lot number 370, how much is on the side? Is it 30 feet there to give you the 100-foot frontage and, and keep the, yeah, and do well, something with lot? If you add 30 feet to that, it, 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 it does cut through the house. If you were, it does. That's, what I, was, that's yeah, what I was looking for, yeah. one of the lines to show me whether it did or so, it didn't. No matter which way you come in from, whether it be North Main Street or the Eastern right. Property Boundary, with 100 feet, yeah. you're going you're gonna to go through the existing house. So, you know, the, the options being keep the existing house to, to try to save some costs and mm -hmm. create a second lot, which would be substandard. We'd need relief on that um, for frontage. Or do we just rehab the whole property altogether, um, create three conforming, well, not Two. conforming, but th three new lots with... You know, new dwellings on them, that nice straight property yeah. lines. That, and, and really, I mean, it would be um, it'd be similar to what's out in the neighborhood now. Now, now some of those, you're right, are probably pre-existing non-conforming lots. Um, I haven't researched all the abutting properties, but it would certainly, it wouldn't be out of line with the rest of the neighborhood. Creating these, I mean, we're not asking for a great I reduction I wish the planning area. board or the city council would give this, that authority under our ordinance. Because, yes, that would be a very good way to look at it, and I think the board may consider that sometimes, but well, I, I, just would, I just wish they'd change the ordinance to let us do it. Go ahead. And the only reason I, I mentioned the, those school properties is, in, in my opinion, it's a similar type of mm -hmm. thing where relief was granted without, you know, necessarily there being a... It, it, just relief was granted to... to to make it effective to re rehab the uh, those properties, I understand, and that's that's there all we're looking to do. There are four other here. members of this board, and plus there's people in the oil. Let's see what they got to say. Sure, thank you. Is members of the board any questions specifically about this particular project? No, Mr. I Tallman? mean one of my. One, I, I guess my question is, the the only thing under forty section forty that you've brought up is the topography. Yes or no? Would that be a problem if this were two lots or three lots? It's the same issue. It, it's it's a similar issue. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Anybody here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay. 
So there we've got it, members of the board. We've got the petition um, to create three substandard lots. Um, that's what the petition is for. Do we think that they've met the hardship uh, requirement under 40A? Have they shaped topography, soil condition, and a hardship that meets it? If they have, then somebody should make a motion to grant. If we say no, then it should be a motion to deny. I'll make a motion to grant. John Frank, motion to grant. <clears throat> Demolition of the existing dwelling. Oh. Demolition of the existing Are the sheds going to? Yeah, everything. Yes. The, the Demol sheds. All, all structures. All Demolition. structures. Demo. Yeah. Site plan. Site plan. Yeah, so we'll go back to the... So i got to use my cheat sheet here. No <laughs> building permit shall be issued until the site plan has been approved by the site plan review committee. And no site preparation work shall be commenced prior to approval of the site plan by the site plan review committee. Sounds good. There isn't one abutting property that meets the standard. So <laughs> you go three in each direction. And yeah. So 10,000 square foot lots, it, I know it's a 12,000 square foot district, but every other property is 4,000, 7,000, 8,000, 8,000, 5,000, say 8,000. So it's going to be bigger than all yeah, the Yeah, these aren't small properties. No, I, I get it. I mean, they're and, substandard, and, but they're right. not and small. And the position, it's well, the position not, of the house. There's motion there. Wait a minute. Let's position of the house on the where it is, I, I can see it's close to the street, and it's kind of right in the middle on the land. It, it definitely, this is more suited to making better And is your, one of the other conditions going to be all the setback requirements will be except for frontage? Like the uh, area, that, dimension. They can't get a building permit. No, no, but I just want to make sure that the variance that he's that he's proposing, so you have a waiver of frontage, but the side yard, front yard, rear yard, those dimensional requirements for the envelope are going to be met. That is unless correct. You're yeah. read, unless you read, unless I'm reading as lot coverage on here. You don't need lot coverage. I don't well, believe. yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we'd be asking for it just because, you know, with with the smaller size lot, meeting the twenty five percent. You know, if you're going from a 12,000 to a 10,000 or a 12,000 to an 8,000, you know, that 25% really doesn't leave you with a lot of impervious area. Um, so we are asking for a reduction. I think it's noted, um, we're asking the, the, to increase it from 25% to 35% on the 8,000 square foot lot and 25% to 30% uh, percent for the other two, the 10,000 square feet lot, uh, lots, I should say. Okay. As noted on the plan then. Lot coverage. Is there, there's no building envelopes on here, so there is none. No, we would fully comply with setback All requirements. Setbacks. Yes, that's my motion. Okay, so that's John's motion. Do we have a second? I'll give it a second. Jim Clark in second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. John Frank. Yes. Jim Corkins. Yes. Dan Dupere. No. No. Joe Pereira. No. Joe Pereira, no. Chairman Assad, no. The vote is three to two. That motion is denied. The petition is denied. Thank you, Mr. Tolman. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number four. Four M six Resnick LLC. Zero zero <coughs> fifth street map N twenty lot thirty four. The applicant seeks a variance to construct a five unit multifamily dwelling in a CBD, Central Business District, and an AOD, Arts Overlay District, <coughs> waiving front and rear yard setback requirements. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Chair. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the board, again, for the record, Attorney Thomas Killarn Law says at 350 North Main Street in Fall River, Massachusetts. I represent the applicant. With me uh, is uh, Jeff Tallman, the design engineer. Um, what we have before you is a currently a vacant parcel of land uh, with fronting on uh, 5th Street and also on Spring Street. It's uh, completely asphalted out as a paved parking area as it presently sits. Uh, this property is somewhat unique in that it sits in uh, both the CBD uh, district as well as the Arts Overlay district. Uh, when we originally submitted the application, uh, we were thought there would be a need for zoning relief to allow for the development of a five-unit structure as the CBD district uh, requires that uh, the multifamily use would be at least 20 units. Uh, but the arts overlay district does permit uh, the construction of a four to six unit um, dwelling. And that's what exactly what we're proposing here is actually right in the middle of five units. 
Uh, so I would suggest to the board that no variance relief is required with regard to the number of units, um, although that may have been referenced in the initial, initial application. The structure itself uh, will require some front yard and rear yard uh, setback relief as the rear yard is set back approximately five feet and the front yard is set back seven feet. The requirements being for a front yard 12 feet and rear yard would be 10 feet. So there is some minimal relief required with regard to the rear and front yard setback. Uh, there is proposed 10 parking spaces, uh, so we'd be able to provide two parking off-street parking spaces uh, per unit. Again, the parcel as it currently sits is asphalted out to the boundary lines of the property. Um, there will be a reduction in impervious area. There will be some green space uh, added. Uh, there's also room, and it's showed on the plan, a uh, area for a dumpster pad um, on the, I'm not north sure that would be the north, yeah, north side of the property. Uh, so again, we, we're dealing with a, a piece of property that's really sitting there vacant, except again, it's asphalted out. We'll be adding in some green space. Um, the arts overlay district specifically contemplates increasing downtown housing opportunities, and we think that this uh, particular use, this, pr this proposed project, meets that requirement that's specifically identified in the arts overlay district. Again, I think the relief that we're seeking is quite minimal in that two small setbacks uh, for the front yard and rear yard. Uh, obviously, if the board has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. When I look at the plan, the one I saw the five five foot rear yard setback requested. The one to the far, I guess the northeast, that unit, it looks like the proposed patio, is that right on the line or is it still going to be a five foot offset there? It, that would definitely be on the property, but there would be an offset. Now, the patio itself doesn't need to meet the No, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, as it, I'm looking at the line, yeah. you said the five year rear. So yeah. the five, five foot rear setback, that's to the building, not that's to the to patio. The Correct. It, that's there was a revised plan I just that was submitted. I don't know if you have a copy of that that had like uh, bump outs on the back and front. Um, so this one was this one was received September 9th, so this is going to be the one that we're yeah. looking at. Yeah. So that. So one, the yeah. only relief the only relief on this particular project is front and rear yard. Correct. Other than that, a five foot reduction on both front and side. No, no, the but, but that's side yard too. I mean, I mean, uh, front and rear. The front and rear was the only ones that I found. Correct. Yes. Okay. That because you've got the parking, you've got. Okay. Uh, and obviously, the hardship in this would be the lot shape because of the depth of the lot, where the building would be located. Um, it's it's really restrictive, uh, being 54 feet along Fifth Street, and it does widen out a little bit, but not drastically. Yeah, no, you got to. That's the build. That's the parking lot. That's the way it's. Correct. Yeah, got it. Okay. Members of the board, any questions on this particular project? Yeah, I, I was just confused. I drove by and I didn't think it was this property because this is the one that the one we approved last the week. One, the, the one, the one behind it. Get this and put a parking yeah, lot. This, this one I didn't get run over by the bus. This one, I, well, that would have been the natural for the guy behind, but this one is yeah. by itself. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone here in favor of this particular? Sir, you jumped up. Are you in favor or opposed? I'll get to you. I'll get to the opposition in a minute. So is there anyone here in favor of this petition? No. Anyone opposed? Yes, sir. Will you identify yourself for the record and tell us what your opposition is? Yes, Keith Michon, uh, representative of the Fall River Educators Association. Uh, we're located at 178 4th Street. Uh, and our property is an office building. It abuts the parking lot. Uh, 178? 178. 178. 178, the little, the little brick building. The little brick building, yeah. 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 And we have a rear exit. Um, it's kind of unique that we step out of the building into the parking lot. Uh, so our property line is about six inches off of the building. Yes. So we're concerned about... I know the building well. Go ahead. I almost bought it. That's why oh, I'm really? saying Because <laughs> it's right there. You walk out and you're there. Right. So we're concerned about uh, waiving that rear, um, rear allowance uh, would affect our, our building. What, where your building is, what? well, you I have to deal with whatever the owner is. Right. But the, you all, that building sits right on, your building sits right on the lot that you have. That's it. There's a little, maybe if it's six inches, you're lucky. Right. Um, but it, it opens into that parking lot. Uh, but th there's, as I remember, well, I should, there's nothing in your deed that says you have the right to pass and repass on this piece of property if you get you access. I don't know how it ever got carved out 
uh, but it, it is, the building exists. Um, the building are far, they're, they're to the east of your building, and what's next to your building is the parking lot. Right, correct. So, I mean, so the, the waiver of frontage and rear yard really don't affect the parking lot area. But I'll let Attorney Kaloran answer instead of me. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you said exactly what I was thinking, uh, Mr. Chairman. So the building to be pro that's being proposed is a, a good distance away from the existing office building that sits on that corner. So if they're exiting out of the rear to a parking area, they're still going to be exiting out of the rear into a parking area. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, and I haven't done the title to the property, I'm not aware of any existing easements that allow no, that office know. building to I exit out onto that. that. Ha having said that, it, it certainly a, it appears that there'll probably be a little grass area. Um, once I, I know, wait, wait. This, let me, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals. This board is not going to grant easements. I'm not going... Nor am I suggesting, when, Mr. Chairman. All I'm saying is that there's not going to be anything there that's impeding their anything ingress that currently and egress. exists. It's you, going to be exactly, exactly. as it is. That's, exactly. So I want to make sure that you understand that. So the building, if you saw, I yeah, think, we Frank, yeah. the so the building is way, it's, it's off to the east of you. Uh, nothing is really changing there. Uh, whoever the, whoever 4M6 Resnick LLC uh, is, you may want to talk to them and see if you can do something for, but that, that's outside of the scope of this board's authority to do. But I understand your opposition. I didn't get a chance to see the plans before oh. coming here tonight. I just wanted you to consider. No, but did you see? Did you get a good look at them? Yeah. Okay. I, I would add, initially, this was all one property where that building was in this particular piece, and there was a relief granted. There was a variance granted. I want to say back in the eighties. It had to be 1982 when I was looking at the building. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's why yeah, I know yeah. about it. And said, what and a lovely, what a lovely these. building and what a parking lot. Until John Miranda That's what said, created hey, this situation. is all you get. Yeah, the, initially it was all one owner, so the, I don't think there are any easements in place or anything like that. But he, he, stepping out onto private property now and it'll continue to, it's not going to change. Well, that's, that's why I'm suggesting that maybe they talk to whoever the sure. owner is. And, but anyway, so anyway, members, anyone else opposed to this petition? Okay. Uh, members of the board, you've heard the presentation. Have they met the requirements uh, under 40A, Section 10? Should we grant a variance? Should it be denied? Make a motion to approve. Joe Pereira, motion to approve. Any conditions? The obvious condition uh, of uh, site plan site review. Site plan review. Okay. All right. So we have Joe Pereira's motion to grant. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second, Jim Calkins. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. Uh, John Frank. Yes. Jim Calkins. Yes. Chairman Assad. Yes. So that petition is granted. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you for coming out this evening. Agenda item number four. Daniel Quintel, care of attorney Peter A. Solino, 1313 South Main Street, Map G24, Lot 3. The applicant seeks a variance to demolish a portion of the existing property location and convert the existing structure into two separate lots with each lot containing a separate mixed-use building, waiving all dimensional requirements in a BL local business in R4 two-family district. The applicant is also seeks a special permit to reduce parking requirements. Thank you. For purposes of the record, my name is Peter Solino. I'm a lawyer with offices at 550 Locust Street in Fall River. The subject property, 1313 South Main Street, is the former Lincourt and Pappas Insurance Agency. Um, the proposal before you is to demolish a portion of the existing building, almost through the middle of the building, taking away five feet from each building. That's where they were. Se that's where they were connected. Now they're going to be separated by ten feet. By ten feet, total. five and five on each side. So the proposal is to separate the lot, creating lot A and B as shown on the plan, leaving the existing buildings on their respective lots. The proposal includes a mixed-use concept in which there would be commercial space on the first floor and residential dwelling units above. In terms of the actual relief sought, um, I've certainly been before the board many times. This property straddles two zoning districts. Um, 
However, the majority of the property sits in a BL. So my analysis is focused on the BL because it's been the general interpretation of the board that where the majority sits, that's the controlling zoning. So in that lens, there is no lot coverage requirement in the uh, BL district. Um, we have enough frontage, uh, it's 50 feet of frontage in a BL, and each of the separate lots has 104 and 106 respectively. Uh, the area is sufficient um, in terms of the proposal and the outside side yard setbacks are sufficient. The relief for setback pertains to that middle piece whereby we're removing a portion of the building and so there needs to be a 10 foot side yard setback and we're only going to have five in this proposal on lot A and lot B. Additionally, the existing structure sits mighty close to the rear of the property line abutting the car wash. And so as a result of that, we have a request for rear yard setbacks on lot A and B. The existing structure on proposed lot A is uh, only one foot from the property line as it sits. And the existing structure on lot B is seven feet from the rear property line as it sits. And so that's the genesis of the request for a variance for rear and side yard setback. When I filed my initial application, I also included a request for parking. And then uh, Dan Aguiar and Mr. Gorodetsky went back and forth. And so ultimately the conclusion came up through this detailed parking table on the bottom of the plan here that the proposed spaces should be sufficient. Um, I just want to make sure everybody has the last one dated September 9th. Is that the plan everybody's looking at? I got one week. Day yeah. Okay. All right. And so you see the parking. September, date September 9th receives it. The 13th. Yeah. Okay. That's yes. Updated. So in the bottom. Number three that tells us all exactly about the right. angles. Exactly right. So Mr. Yes. Aguiar required Mr. Gorodetsky to do a detailed analysis of the parking, lay out the parking table and the requirements, like measure the spaces and the aisles. So I would submit to the board that I think as a result of that analysis, it doesn't appear that we need parking relief. Uh, that I thought we needed when we initially filed the petition in August. Attorney uh, Salino, what, yes. I don't, the only piece, and I agree with your analysis about the majority being in the BL district, mm -hmm. but the R4 district, uh, is, is that, will there be apartments? Is there something happening in that northeast corner? Or uh, the north, yeah, the northeast corner of part, lot number B. Yes, because. So, that, so, that, so some of that is going to be in the R4 residential district. Correct. Okay. And the proposal is to construct within the existing footprint, Mr. Assad. Yep. So it's not to bump anything out. It's to build out within the existing within, footprint. Within, no, no. It's all within the existing building. Correct. But it was just, my thought was being in the R4 district, I have a residential use in, the, in that area. Yep. Not going I mean, up. Not going up. No. Not, not going up. The building staying on Nothing except for that middle piece. Except for yep. the, the five foot, the ten feet that had disappeared. That's correct. Okay. Um, and then in terms of the substance of the request, obviously the hardship to me here is the existing structure. Um, I think we know it as Lincourt and Pappas Insurance. It's been there forever. Uh, and then this really peculiar shaped lot line along the car wash. Um, so the existing structure coupled with the shape makes the site, to me, pretty unique in terms of shape. Um, is there, no, I'm going to ask you this question. Sure. It's not... This is the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I understand that it stands by Stephen T. Roy, professional land surveyor, mm -hmm. but as I'm looking at the dock line and I'm looking at maybe what exists, is there some issue with some property lines back there? Um, I don't know that there's issues in the back with property lines. There's an issue of a right-of-way, and I think Mr. Shapshelowitz may talk about that uh, this evening, but our deed says that it is subject to the rights of the car wash to pass and pass repass and repass. on the, the t what's labeled as a 10-foot right-of-way. Yeah, no, there's that 10-foot right-of-way that exists in those yeah. deeds because I'm a little bit familiar with 13, what is it, 1355, the old coppers, yep. and that 10-foot right-of-way. That mm -hmm. was always a problem. Always an issue, and I think it still is as far as I know. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that I know about the 10-foot, and that's always been an issue when I see attorneys from Shallow it's sitting there. But I'm looking at the line that's drawn, and I'm just wondering whether there was some additional property line issue. I don't believe uh, that I, needs to be addressed. I don't believe so. Um, okay. But I'm certainly, you know. No, I'll, and, we'll, let, and we'll let him speak, speak but, to that. But I'm asking, just looking at the plan, if there's something that you need to address. If no, not. I don't. I don't believe so. I, the only thing we were careful in the consideration and the drawing of the plan. 
to obviously not obstruct the easement, not factor that into the parking calculations, et cetera. So there's actually a Jersey barrier there now. Yep. Um, so all the parking is inside that Jersey barrier as proposed on this plan. Okay. And then lastly, uh, in terms of the lack of what I would perceive the lack of detriment, I think the proposal is entirely consistent with the mixed use in the neighborhood. You have a gas station car wash, you have a bar, you have multifamily housing. So to me, um, this is perfect for a business local kind of proposal. Happy to entertain any questions that the board may have. My clients are in the audience. If anyone has any specific questions for Mr. Quintel, we'd be happy to answer. Okay, thank you. Members of the board, any specific questions right now? No? Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is anyone opposed to this petition? Uh, Attorney Chipshall, if you identify yourself for the Attorney record, Chipshall, please. Attorney Chipshall, I'm with an office at 263 Walnut Street. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I uh, don't have any problem with it. it it's, it's more than a 10-foot right away. There's a plan on file because the car wash was originally part of the Link Court and Pappas property. So uh, when Benavides, who was the owner of the car wash. No, oh, Benavides owned the car wash? Benavides bought the car wash, I believe, in the early 80s. He bought the parcel from Link Court and Pappas. And it was a plan on file at that point that, cons that provided for the barriers on the s north side of the property, or well, north side of the lane, to be, um, that was part of the approval. But we don't have a problem with the setback, the buildings against But the, I, know, I know the deed into 1355. Yep. Ha has had that ten foot right it, away, it, and it was just and it was just subject to the rights of others in the ten foot right away the, to pass the, and repass. That's that's correct. So, but, and, but and the, I, I didn't the, the I didn't right, do the right this of piece. way is much wider than ten feet. No, but what I'm saying that lot had ten feet, and I right. think this one had ten feet. I think the Copper's lot has. So yeah. that's it was just a ten foot. It was it just references right. ten feet. Feet. Right. Yes. But I and the other one I always thought had an additional. No, they they. It wasn't just that singular ten Lincoln feet. Lincourt and Pappas retained the right, the ownership of that. I'll call it the lane. Okay. And granted the car wash, the right to pass to and that. repass, but as part of the, I'm going to call it the approval of the subdivision at that time. The there was a requirement that that barrier be put up. Okay. And when that barrier was put up, it effectively precluded Lincourt and Pappas from using the, the lane. lane. Okay. The only one that can really use the lane is the Asia cop. One, the old coppers. But they can, they they can only use, use it to the extent that they have a 10-foot right of way. That's it. And they built... Put it park, they couldn't yeah. use it. it yeah. That's it. And they, and they built into their 10-feet easement. Okay. So... But the car wash, if that's who you're representing. Correct. You, is there anything that I'm looking at here that's either interfering with your use? No, nope, not at all. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I think my and last the, time and I the was, building, I think the, the, the cement barriers, the Jersey barriers. That, that was on, that's on the north there. side. Yeah. And, and they can't use the lane anyway because the only use of it would be to cross the, the car wash and they don't have the right to they do don't that. Need, that's correct. So in effect, that's dead land for them. And it doesn't affect, what they're doing doesn't no, affect. No, it, it doesn't affect. The reason why I'm asking you that question is what they're doing. Is anything that I missed when I was out there interfering with your tent for, no. and it may be wider, but right to pass and repass no. whoever's going back no. and forth. It'll probably be better because they'll, they'll control their own, uh, I'm going to call it property, which has been in the past used for. Uh, and you have purposes. no issues with the prop with the property line along the easterly. No. So no. that's that's not an issue. No. Okay. Thank you. Separate utilities. Yeah, that's that's got to be separate utilities. Yes, it's got to be separate utilities. I'm not trying to give Drainway his business, but I'm you have to. Have. It was one building. It's, yeah. It was. Yeah. No. No. I mean, <laughs> and file the. You, you do your affidavit with yeah, any have year. this great form. It, it's, 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 I don't know. It's good. 
It works. Thank you. That's it? That's all you have? Separate utilities? Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else in favor? Anyone else opposed? Anyone want to tell me about this project? Okay, hearing nothing. Members of the board, have they met the burden? They don't need the parking relief, really, but you could make that the parking is as shown on the plan and meets the requirements. Okay. Because we don't have to grant, because yeah, I, I believe Attorney Salino. I have made a motion. I was oh, I thought asking. you said you made a motion. <laughs> no. I was just asking, uh, the, the talking about uh, separate utilities. Okay, so. I'm sorry. I thought I heard Point you make a motion. <laughs> okay, so if anybody makes a motion, we should have parking in there too. Mr. Yes, Chairman, yeah. I will make. Thank you. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. that we grant the variance uh, subject to uh, planning review and uh, that parking be maintained in accordance with the plans as submitted. Separate utilities. And separate utilities. Affidavit to be filed. Okay. All right, so that's Jim Parkins' motion. We second. have a second. Well, second. Second, James Appear. Any discussion on the motion? No. 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 Uh, Dan Dupier, no discussion. Okay. Dan Dupier, yes? Yes. Joe Pereira? Yes. John Frank? Yes. Jim Calkins? Yes. Chairman Assad? Yes. So that petition is granted with those conditions. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Agenda item number five. Let me get this out of the way. Tetrot Real Estate, LLC, care of attorney Peter A. Solino, 761 Highland Avenue, map M19, lot 30. The applicant seeks a variance to convert the existing nursing home, nursing home structure into nine residential units in an S single family zoning district, waiving the use and lot coverage requirements. The applicant also seeks a special permit to reduce parking requirements Currently, no external changes will be done to the existing footprint. And this is the, I think this is the revised plan? Yes, there is a revised plan in the file, Mr. Chairman. I'm just looking for the, yeah, it is September 9th. Okay, Correct. Attorney Salino. Good evening for the record. Peter Salino, 550 Locust Street in Fall River. With me is my client, Aaron Tetrault. Aaron Tetrault, Tetrault Real Estate, LLC. Thank you. What's your address? I don't know. 1282 Highland Ave, Fall River, Mass. So, uh, the project before you is the old Highland Manor nursing home. Mr. Tetral purchased it recently at a foreclosure auction. The project consists, or the proposal consists of converting the existing structure from the nursing home concept to a nine unit uh, building. The blend of the units as proposed by my client is six one bedroom units and three two bedroom units. That's delineated in the plan. The initial filing uh, contained a little bit of a different parking concept, and after getting deeper into the proposal with Mr. Aguiar, we decided to submit this additional plan, which is before you this evening. And so the major change here is the parking. The second proposed plan, the plan that's in front of you this evening, contains uh, off-street parking spaces for 18 vehicles, effectively paving the backyard, the Hanover Street side, if you will, the northeast corner of the property, including 14 parking spaces, one ADA-compliant handicap parking space, and three parallel-style parking spaces along the southerly boundary of the property. So if you're following my analysis here, if we have nine apartments and we have 18 spaces, we have two spaces off-street per proposed unit. And so then, that leaves us with the issue of use in an S district um, and really that's the focus here is how to repurpose these existing structures that are so big and what can you do with them in order to make them viable. And so Mr. Tetrault's proposal is to turn it into housing. He has, lives in the neighborhood, he lives on Highland Avenue as you just heard. He purchased Dr. Dunn's house and several other houses in the neighborhood and has had successful conversions with them. And this proposal really is no different. Um, the increased parking requires a waiver uh, in addition to use for lot coverage. Uh, as it sits now, there is 46% lot coverage. 
and as proposed to accommodate the off-street parking spaces, it's 75%. So ultimately, I think with the revised plan, the variance or the zoning relief that we need uh, relates to the use of the property as a multiple residence in a single family district, as well as a lot coverage uh, requirement where we're supposed to have 25 feet in an S district. Um, I would submit to you that I think this proposal is well thought out. I think the use is less dense than the nursing home use. I know we have neighborhood folks here that are going to talk about this this evening, I think for and against. Um, but ultimately, I think this is a pretty good proposal to keep the cars off the street, repurpose a vacant, dilapidated building, um, and really it's, I think, a good project for the neighborhood. So I'm happy to take any questions. Mr. Tetrall certainly is here to answer anything you may have regarding the proposed construction or anything about the site. Okay. So nothing, nothing is happening to the building itself other than being rehabbed. That's correct. The footprint is not footprint changing. is not changing. Correct. No external. No height. It's going issues. to be. It's going to be converted from whatever it is. The four walls will exist and will now have nine residential units. Correct. We're providing off-street parking for each residential unit on the premises. So there's not two, going to be yes, two off-street two, spaces. Two off-street for each unit. No on-street parking, so that won't be impacting the neighborhood. Um, okay. And the building itself, it's because it's in an S district, um, single family residential, the building itself may in fact be one of the components of a hardship because you're stuck with the structure. Uh, okay. And then the, it would be a special permit for the, I think, special permit or a variance. I think it's a special permit for the, um, no, but you met the, you met the park. And so you yeah, so the initial, that. when so I initially filed it. So variance for yeah. Use and lock coverage. When I initially filed it, uh, we had a different parking concept, and there was some concern from the city engineer. We went back to the drawing board, did a little bit of a deeper dive, and came back with this plan. So initially, when I filed, I was asking for waivers on parking, which I don't think we need anymore no, as a result. I think of you met that. That's why I'm, right. I'm saying I think that that's gone. All right, members of the board, any specific questions about this particular project? Okay. I see people in the audience. Is there anybody here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'll start in the back of the room, and Madam, I'll have you have the last word. How's that? So, sir, why don't I start with you with the... Yeah, yes, sir. We'll start with you. There was nobody on this side. I didn't see... Yes, oh, I did. I'm sorry, yeah. Madam. I didn't see your hand. Yeah. I, right. I will come to you. Yeah. I live across the street. Will you identify yourself for the record, please? Yeah, my name is... Lawrence Bassett. I live on Hanover Street, across the street from the nursing home. Uh, there used to be one car that showed up and parked at the nursing home. One car. I, and I believe he's going to put all the cars in the yard. Is that what I heard him that's, say? That's what, that's what the plan, if you haven't seen the plan. No, I haven't that, seen it. You're more than welcome to well, you're, you're welcome to come down here and look at Attorney Solino's or look at my plan. But what they're saying, what the presentation to the board is, 100% of the parking for these nine residential units will be on the premises. So that's uh, nine units, probably two cars per 18, unit. So they're they're providing 18. Cars. That doesn't sound feasible. That yard is not big enough for 20 cars. Okay. You, you can cars. No view way. the plan if you'd like. So let, let, me, let me just say this. The plan is stamped by a... We require, this board requires, plans to be submitted stamped by a professional land surveyor. So the calculations are something that the board can rely on, that it's not me sitting in my office or Attorney Salino with a ruler saying, I think I can get 20 parking spaces. So this, who was this? Sean, Sean Michael Leach stamped it and says, I've reviewed it, I've looked at the dimensions of this, and they can get... 18 parking spaces, off-street parking spaces on this lot. I thought it was to get a uh, parking on the street. That's no. why that showed up. Absolutely. I can't even park my car in front of my house daily. Okay. There's so many cars there now. And sure. It's not in operation anymore, is it? No, no, no. no. I'm talking about the cars that are parked there now daily. Yeah. From President Avenue, from all, all over. 
There's no parking in that neighborhood. And if he's going to bring in 20 more cars, there's not going to be a parking space around. I know he's going to park in the yard, but that's just going to bring more traffic. It's going to be ridiculous. Okay. May I respond? I across the street. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Attorney Salino. Yeah, just in response to that comment. So the reason for this revised concept yes. is to address that exact issue or question with the neighborhood. So it was to contain the parking on the site so as to not interfere with the parking on Hanover Street. So that's the reason for the second plan. So that garage in the back is being raised. That, yeah. building that is correct, Mr. Frank. Yeah, it has to be in order to accommodate the traffic flow. Right. Um, I also think, I know the plan clearly depicts it, but I also think it's important that it's a drive-through site, if you will. Right. The so you're not existing gonna... driveways on both sides are staying in effect? Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, and if, any, if we're thinking of granting, uh, then an express condition that the garage has to be raised. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's no, no, I know it says it, but I mean, just if, if anybody's thinking about granting it, then that's express condition. Thank you, sir. Madam, you had. Yeah. Oh, is she cutting you off? It was really the lady in the middle. Mm -hmm. Me. No, 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 not you. Back oh, no, still. We're, we're still back there. You've got, you've got support <laughs> back there. <laughs> Good. Can I have your name, please? Um, Mary Palumbo. Yeah. Um, and what, what's your address, please? Hanover Street. Yeah. Number. I need a street number. 765. Are you Mary Louise? Yes. I'm Mary Louise. Hi. M1928. But it has a street address of? 765. 765. Thank you. Please continue. We are just opposed. I'm opposed. Similar to reasons? No. Oh. Um, also because it's a single family um, neighborhood zone yes and I don't believe that um, the flavor of the neighborhood should be changed by um, allowing a nine apartment building okay is it the number nine that you're opposed to would you be Huge would you be opposed. so if it was less than nine is there some number that you that would, would be less than three that would be good. okay less than three Okay. Madam? Amy Peruse, 781 Hanover. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to say my piece that my husband and I have worked extremely hard our entire lives to be able to afford our home in the Highlands to keep our sons away from everything that comes with living in the inner city. And I just feel like this is going to bring it right to our doorstep where we're going to be looking off of our beautiful farmer's porch at a parking lot full of cars and tons of people everywhere. It's just to have an apartment complex right across the street from the home that I worked my entire life to buy is just devastating to me. So I just wanted to say my piece. No, no, you need to. So I, I'd ask Attorney Salino to respond, but and I, I'll, I'll ask the question again because I, that was a concern that I had. The building itself, please... The building itself is not changing. No, I think that's an important piece of this, that there is no apartment building. The facade stays the same. The, I think, if I may respond to one other comment, too. No, no, to, through me, through, certainly, you heard your question. Tell certainly, me what it is. So from my perspective, um, this use is less dense than a nursing home to me. Um, it's next door to a house of worship, near to the hospital. So I don't think we're changing the flavor of the neighborhood. I think we're trying to take a dilapidated structure, better it, that's what I think is happening. Yeah, please, no, talk to me. So the hospital is far away. We don't hear ambulances or anything, first of all. The Buddhist temple is there. We do sometimes have problems parking because they have their events. But they are very quiet and very good neighbors. And as far as the nursing home, when the nursing home was there, it was a very small nursing home. We're not talking Kilmall or something like that. The residents never came outside, and there were maybe three staff at a time. So it was an incredibly quiet place. Now we're talking about having nine potential families, crowds of people, I mean, a, a parking lot full of 20 cars in a single family, beautiful neighborhood. It's just, to me, that is diminishing the Highlands. You know, people move to the Highlands for a reason. And if this continues to happen over and over, and I, I understand that that is a, a big house, too big for a single family, but a nine apartment complex, is just to me is just unfathomable. Well, okay. it's a lot to me. No, I got it. I, but uh, I'll take some more. But I'm just rhetorically, I asked the question. 
on a building like that, and you've said that it's a big bill, and I'm not, I'm not advocating for or against, but the board, this city, this board is going to be confronted with the repurposing of lots of buildings. And I know lots of neighborhoods don't necessarily like what's going to happen for the repurposing of it. But what do you do in a structure like that? That I mean, to, so when I when I heard that the structure was up for sale, I assumed that it was going to be turned into apartments. But I thought it would be maybe three apartments. Okay. Nine apartments. Is no, just, no, I, I got it. The petition yeah. is for nine, but I, but I'm just trying to. What else would happen? I mean, I don't, not unreasonable to think that one family is going to be able to fill up that entire huge house. You know. Um, but I just think it's it's very. Um, I just asked the question because yeah. it, this is going. This topic, this issue, will be coming before this board in the future, and I'm think I'm asking you, who lives in the neighborhood, what do you, what else could happen to that building, especially when I have neighborhood groups come out and say they don't want something to happen, and the building is being uh, deteriorating, you don't want that in your neighborhood. But what do you do? It's what I hear from you and the lady next next to you that you know nine is too much, but maybe three is good. Uh, I got it. Okay. I just, you know, to preserve, we need to try to preserve the integrity. I understand that. I wish you showed, I wish, I wish you and your neighbors got together and showed up at the auction and bid. <laughs> but I wasn't there. I don't know. Let's see, who's next? Uh, the Quintel boys? No? Uh, I, but I told you I'd let you speak last. Madam. Um, Teresa Furl in 70 Stanley Street. Yes. I just want to support my neighbors. I think they're 100% right. Through the years that I've lived on the street, I've seen more and more cars. I've seen more and more children. It's not safe to have 18 more cars. I don't see, um, I can see the parking lot filled with 18 cars, and I can see the potential for 20, 21 cars on our street. Our neighborhood can't wait, 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 let me stop you. Yes. You see, I'm with, with, 18 with, with 18 cars, parking on street, you see 21 cars well, on street? No, I'm saying you have 18 spaces for 18 cars. I see an overflow coming. They can't park. There's no space in the parking lot. They have company. They have visitors. They're going to park on the street. We have children up and down the street with bicycles, with scooters. We have Durfee High School buses coming back and forth all day long. We have Codlin Madeiras. We have Star. We have traffic all day long. We have tenants. We have children back and forth all day long. It's a concern to me to have nine families with 18 cars with limited parking. Okay. And I agree with my neighbors. To cut down on the space, to cut down on the apartment may be a reasonable solution. I just think nine apartments our neighborhood cannot accommodate safely. Okay, thank you. Madam, you've got the last word. I was the gentleman next to you. No, he's with me. Okay, so, so you've got the last word, go ahead. Renee Medeiros, I yes. live at 57 Stanley. I am directly behind this nursing home, so I will be facing the parking lot. So I'm wondering, is there going to be any green space whatsoever, or is it just going to be all parking? Okay. So I look at the plan and I see some trees, but I'm going to let Attorney Salino answer that question. Yes, I'd be happy to answer. So and, if you, and if the board thinks about granting it, and if that's a consideration, that's something the board can do and say, we want a vegetative border to, but let's, let's see what their plan is right now. Yeah, one minute, ma'am. I'll, I'll let you speak in a minute. Go ahead. Okay, so from a zoning plan perspective, yes. obviously there's not a lot of focus on green and fencing and so on and so forth, but my client would be happy to accept the condition that requires the planting of trees, abrovites, or something else that's either imposed by this board or by the planning board and the site plan review process. I mean, that seems entirely reasonable in response to the neighborhood's concerns. Um, we don't have any objection to that. I also think that something else that hasn't been brought up but should be brought up is lighting. Um, I've heard a lot for of the concerns parking lot. for the parking we're, lot. We're going to so, get to that, but so that's something that's usually picked up site plan. by site plan. But, but why don't you address it now? Yeah, so I'd like to just we address can talk it. talk about light so, infiltration. Right. So I think the, the lighting really would help uh, the selection of the lighting would really help, I think, the neighbors' concerns. Um, so we can certainly focus on down lighting. We can focus on low lighting as opposed to lighting on poles. Um, there are a variety of lighting solutions that I think can thwart this idea that this is this parking lot that there's going to be all this activity in. Um, 
I also think it's important if I I'm going off a little bit on a tangent, but no, good. They, they um, need to hear. They need to hear what the options are. Yeah. So to me, the lighting is important. The screening is fine. Um, I also think it's important that um, these apartments will be nice apartments at a what price point, Aaron? About twenty four hundred dollars each. So it's. I say that because um, what he did on um, Dr. Dunn's house. What's the address of that house? Oof. Uh, the house on President Avenue around the corner. Um, he cut it into two, and you get what twenty five hundred. Twenty five. No, no, I got so, that. So, so my point but is, it's going to be. It's, it'll be rental apartment. It's not going to be converted to condominiums. It's not converted to condominiums. My point is, it's a nicer quality of tenant in my view because of the price point. Got it. And I the think best tenants will still have control. No, no, I, I got it. I got it. But I want, I want the neighbors to hear this. I mean, we're looking at it from a land use point of view right but that's but, why I want as much information to them think, so they know what's going on yeah I think it can be a nice concept I think it's certainly being vilified and I understand if I lived in these houses I would feel the way these folks feel mm -hmm. but I I don't think it's an apartment building as it's being presented I think it's a nice historical structure that we're trying to rehabilitate and fit out for this purpose did that did that answer your question not about the all. not at all no. oh okay so I want Confirmation. There's going to be no Section 8 rentals in this. Oh, absolutely building. not. Yeah. Uh, so wait, wait. Time oh, out. Yeah, time yeah. out. Absolutely. Time out. I know that this board. No, this board. Right. We have no authority to say. I you're that. hearing. You're hearing a representation right. made by him. So the parking in and out, in and out. As my neighbor said, we've got fire station up the street constantly. The ambulance is going. The inner. The in and out's going to be on Highland Avenue. It's not going to be so overflowing no into Hanover. No. From Hanover Street. No, there's, there's, a, an there's a driveway on there's Hanover Street. It goes right through. Oh, the existing driveway on Hanover. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be going in and out they're of Hanover Street to park. I'm going to be staring at a parking lot of 18 cars. There's no green space. Where are those no, no, tenants going to be? They just said they'll put green space. No, they're going, to put, they're going to put fancy edging. Well, we can make to, them. To try, try to hide the cars. So where are the neighbors going to be? Those are the tenants. Where, where are they going to be? I'm sorry. To I have green space. The structure isn't changing, which doesn't the matter because it faces Highland Avenue Correct. and it faces North Park. So it doesn't matter if the structure changes to us. We're on Hanover Street mm -hmm. or Stanley. So what matters to us is staring at a parking lot and all these neighbors who could potentially have children. And where are they going to be? They're going to be in a parking lot. And the cars are going to be in and out, in and out, and they're going to have visitors. And they're going to have to park where? On the street. So I'm paying four grand a year for taxes to live in the Highlands as a single mother to give my kid a better life to stare at a parking lot and have traffic all day and all night. I understand your concern. That's the reality of what's being proposed. They're going to lower my tax, tax prices because they're going to, this is going to bring down the neighborhood. I understand your concern. The property value, my resale value, if I wanted to sell my property, it's going to bring down. I don't understand why it has to be not. It's a large structure. Their, we all wait, understand wait. their that. proposal, their right. proposal is for none. Right. That's Which I get it. He wants to bang for his buck. Twenty two hundred a month, each apartment, it's a lot of money. I get it. And I understand the rehab is going to be a lot of money. But be fair to the people that have to live there that currently pay taxes, that pay mortgages, that have children. It doesn't need to be nine nine apartments. Make it four, make it five. So that there is green space, there is yard. There is parking. Okay. Thank you for coming out this year. Wait, wait, wait. Are you already talked? That lady behind you hasn't had the opportunity. Madam, go ahead. Yeah? Um, should I say my name and address? Please. I need your name and address, please. My name's Gail Laferrier. My husband, Dr. Anthony Caprio, we own the house at 721 Highland Avenue. Yes. Um, There's a couple of things that I was concerned of that I want to bring it up. No, please don't. Um, we pay 10000 we're good. But we have a huge parking lot. And in time, my husband, within 20 years, has planted Aphrodite's and gardens and such. And I just wanted to bring up landscaping could be a factor here to make it look more curb appeal for the neighborhood. The monks have been wonderful in the same time span of 20 years we've lived there. I think they were there six months before us with beautiful flower gardens. They made a parking lot where it was grass initially. They're very respectful to ask us or tell us they're going to have a celebration 
Um, they're very helpful when we've been sick and needed their help. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, as a compliment, Mr. Tatro bought Dr. Dunn's house, and we were there 20 years. So we know how Dad has done, put a lot of work and effort into that house. And he has wonderful tenants there, and he has only two units that he utilizes with wonderful tenants. But the concern comes with parking that we had and the amounts of people that you might have coming into the house. And so my question would be, is there any solution to how it's configured the inside of the house to make it a little more like the situation at Dr. Dunn's house, which is just as big as a house, is just as big as my house with two people in it. So people in the neighborhood have different size houses. Some people have families. We're 84 and 74. So it's all different, but we're concerned about maybe thinking about the configuration of the house to accommodate less people, and maybe curb appeal could be thought of, and how maybe to make it so it's reasonable. That's a cut through street, <coughs> Hanover Street. So besides the church, people are going and cutting through all the time. And I can remember the time that people sometimes aren't watching out for the kids. Mm -hmm. when, well, you could be on a sidewalk and get hit in that area, just like Mary's sister did and almost died a few years back, just walking President Avenue from her house on Hanover. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of on a scale here because I know what a good job he has done with the people he has on Hanover Street, but there's other apartments there without parking facilities. But the owners live in the Highlands, so they're there every day watching or fixing the house, which we realize he's in the neighborhood now, so he would perhaps be there more often. So the concern is parking, curb appeal, and perhaps a thought of configuration differently in the house to accommodate less people. Thank you. Sir. My name is Paula Blank, and I live at 707 Highland Avenue, okay. right on the corner of President and Highland. Yes. Uh, so their property is a couple of doors, uh, three doors down. Well, I, he's also, his uh, two family, a big giant on the corner of Hanover and property, abuts my property. The two families that live there, great, never a problem. My concern when I heard that it was up for auction, who's going to buy it? Who's going to win that bid? And what's it going to become? When I heard it was going to be nine apartments, I was very concerned. I said, it's, I'm glad somebody bought it, but can't they go like seven units? Because I know the lot real well. Um, I'm in favor of this project. I'm glad someone who I already abut that owns the property, maintains a great home, a beautiful property that abuts mine. My concern, what was gonna happen on the corner there when that, who's gonna buy that building? I'm glad I found out it was this guy that bought the building. And I'm in favor of the project. I understand nine units is a lot. Seven, I'd be all for it. But three is absurd for a project that huge. And there's a park directly across the street, for crying out loud. There's plenty of green space. I mean, I realize nobody hardly parks on Highland Avenue. I mean, it's seldom when there's a religious function at the temple. Um, but I'm in favor of this project. And, uh, you know, good luck. I'm, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you know, Mr. Chairman, one, one thing we haven't really discussed uh, what what is going to be where we're using the term unit what, what would comprise the, the each units yeah the proposal the is garden. six one bedroom units and three, three two, two bedroom, bedroom units and that's well, what's which on the plan. means that probably the number of cars would not even get to that come, come, come right. up to that and the nature of the one bedroom you're not going to have families no residing families. in it and we'd be lucky if we get 11 cars in there yeah. 
Mark, one of the questions that I have, and this, this goes back to a neighbor concern, especially from Hanover Street. Yes, I, I understand you'd be willing to do something with some vegetative barrier, but I'm, <laughs> I'm a contractor. I'm looking at these plans. You don't have a lot of space between the edge of your parking and the parking lot mm -hmm. on the Hanover Street side and even less in that northeast corner on the Stanley Street side. So it's nice to say you might be able to plant something, but I don't see anything substantial enough to mitigate the situation that we're hearing from some of the folks right across the street. Okay. I mean, that obviously, I, well, I think you understand because I know what you do for work, but you put out a yield plan, you bring it to zoning, we have these concerns. Mm -hmm. If we you know, keep going in the direction we are going, I would ask that we have a continuance to create a different concept to come back before you, um, and we can address that concern, Mr. Pereira, more appropriately. But obviously when you're in a concept phase, there's not well, a... And, and, yeah. and I realize we're, we're kind of tipping over into, into site plan in that case, but I think we've got to look at the whole project and, and the impact on the neighborhood. That's all. I'm not going to... You know, make well, a motion no that's going to specify planting, so. No, no, <clears throat> make it a condition if that's where we're going. But I'm also hearing the neighborhood being concerned about these nine units on this particular project. I don't know whether I just heard Attorney Salino saying you wanted to table it or something well, to come I, back. Or a couple of things. Think about reconfiguring um, or reducing we, the numbers. It's oh. not, all I'm saying is, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals. The petition is for nine units. We've got some parking. You're hearing some of the neighbors from, yes, I like it, right. three units, five units, seven. I mean, it's not, let's make a deal. It's No, understood. I, I want to make sure. It's an investment. It's going to be a large investment on the part of the petitioner right. to redo this. But I also, the board has to be very sensitive and concerned about the people that are living in the neighborhood. Yeah, and I, I, know that Aaron, I know that Mr. Tetrault lives in the neighborhood and is investing there. Uh, his past history has been Stella, but the, that woman who lives across the street and that man who lives across the street, they're going to be there. So, Understood. So yeah. if you need time well, to talk yeah, to them. I was going to well, say, one, they might want a five-minute recess to so talk to them. If you um, wanted to talk so, to them, well, you not tell opposed, me what you need. not opposed to that, but it's a little bit tough when you're the petitioner and there's no objection in the record to walk into this, right? Because no, we no. didn't know what the objection was going to be. Attorney Salino, I've been there, I understand, and yeah. I'm saying now this is the first time that these people are hearing you get a chance to voice it. Yeah. Whether or not you need to table it to another meeting to meet with them and come up with some, if there is any amicable solution, right. or if you want, table it for five minutes and go outside until, I don't know. Yeah, um, but what I'd like to do, the, if I may, is Mr. Tallman's going to say a couple of words. He's the, the engineer on the project. Um, and then if anyone else has anything to say, and I'll talk to Aaron briefly. No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, no, I would just like to say, I prepared the plan. And initially, when we prepared the plan, we were asking for relief uh, for the parking requirement of the two spots per unit. We were, we were requesting 12 rather than the 18. Given the unit count that we were proposing, mm -hmm. uh, the six one-bedrooms and the, and the three two-bedrooms, um, so we were proposing a parking count, basically one spot per bedroom, which is probably more realistic than the 18 that are required for the nine units, with six of them being single bedrooms. We had a plan all drawn up that way. When it was filed, there was we got some feedback uh, from the city engineer and stuff like that, and that's why we revised the plan to satisfy the parking requirement, because parking was an issue. Listening to the abutters tonight, it seems like they don't want to look at a pocket. They, they want to look at green space, which is what we had on the original plan. We can provide 12 off-street parking spots without really changing much of what's out there in terms of the existing driveway. Uh, that can be done. So if it's a matter of... But you're reducing the number of parking spaces. Well, which would be done by special permit, which is what was filed. Uh, I, I got it. I, I, well, I shouldn't say I got it. Yes, I understand. I don't know. The board members, I think, also understand it. But the, it's the number, it's the count that I think we're getting into single family residence district. We want nine units. We're going to redo. So, yes, we can do it, but I don't know. Yeah. It's like a quadratic equation. Here we go. What are we doing? Where are they right. going? Good, Peter. Attorney Salino. Yes, I have quadratic equation. That's. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I mean, it's the only way I can say it. It just like keeps on going. Let's That's find That's a new one for the Zoning Board of Appeals. It is. Chairman. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals, Jeez. not a mathematics class. All right. Um, so. 
I am going to make a motion to continue this petition, uh, if I may, to the October meeting to go look at the meet concept a little more closely and address some of the feedback we've heard this evening. Maybe meet with the neighbors. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't. So. Say one more thing. Yeah, yes, ma'am. We're not opposed to apartments because when it went up for auction, of course, your thought is, my God, it's going to be a methadone clinic, it's going to be a group home, it's going to be, you know, whatever that you don't want in your neighborhood. So we're not opposed to the apartments. But to say 12 parking spaces, it's one bedroom, it might be one car. No, at that income, that yeah. price point, it's and a two-person. Yeah. It's couples, more than likely. And they don't have one. And but, they have but, two but couples. There was only three two-bedrooms. Everything else was one But bedroom. a one-bedroom, yeah. at that yeah. price yeah. point, yeah. it's a probably a married good. couple yeah. with two cars. Or a young so, professional. So, so, this, is, so this, is, yeah. this is what I think. And I've got a couple of years on Attorney Salino. Just a couple. Just a couple. Um, and, and he said he walked in here without knowing that there was opposition, and there was no opposition as a matter of record prior to tonight. Uh, whether or not he's going to invite you all and say, let's talk about what we can do to get this done, I'm certainly not going to attend Attorney Salino out of practice. But... There's enough of you here that I think you need to talk to him and Aaron and say, it's our neighborhood, we want you. But, but he could say, get lost, I want nine units, come <laughs> back in October and the board will decide yes or no. But um, it was you important. To work it with is, them and come if anybody them. watches the meetings, this is very important for neighborhoods to come out and voice their opinions and let the board know and let the petitioners know what the impact you see for your neighborhoods. It is extremely important. By doing nothing, we don't know. I go park out there and take a look at things during the course of the day. It's not the same as living there. No. You live there. Highland Avenue, you're correct. There's many parking spaces on Highland Avenue. But if you're going to the Hanover parking no. entrance, it's, there's it's nowhere a, to park. It's an issue. Hano there's a big difference. Highland Avenue, Hanover right. Street. You know, Absolutely. The Buddhist temple, if they have a function, there's no parking Rare occasion. Home. It's not It's not no, a daily no. occurrence. Mass at Holy yes. Name Church every Saturday and Sunday, several times a day, no parking mm -hmm. whatsoever. So I think we're not opposed to the apartments, but I just think maybe a compromise on the number of apartments. Thank you. Attorney Salino, so your motion is to continue to yes. the October 20th meeting? Yes. Okay. Members of the board, that's his motion. Do we have... Uh, Anybody want to entertain that motion and say yes, a motion to grant to the October 20th? Motion to grant. Uh, Joe Pereira, a motion to grant second. continuance to the October. Second by Dan Dupere. Any discussion? Hearing none. John Frank. Yes. Jim Corkins. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. Chairman aside, yes. This petition will be October 20th meeting. Hopefully you'll talk to Attorney Salino or Aaron. Between, maybe there'll be some compromise, and if not, the board will decide one way or the other. Thank you very much for coming out this evening. Okay. Agenda item number six. Hector Angel, care of attorney, Joseph J. Machado, 209 Manchester Street, map I-23, lot 25. The applicant seeks a variance to convert an, ex an existing three-family dwelling to a four-family dwelling. Okay, can we take it all outside, please? Thank you. Excuse me, I'll be right there. It's all good. Excuse me, can you take that conversation outside? Thank you. So we'll get back to Hector. Hector Angel, care of attorney Joseph J. Machado, 209 Manchester Street, map I-23, lot 25. The applicant seeks a variance to convert an existing three-family dwelling to a four-family dwelling, waiving all zoning requirements in an A2 apartment district. Good evening. Will you identify yourself for the record, please? David DeRoe. Okay. I'm the property manager of this project. Okay. First name David, last name? DeRoe. D-U-R-O-T. 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 Thank you. Address. What? An address. Where do you? Oh, my, my business is at 117 Martha Street in Fall River. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't see your name anywhere on any of the... Any idea where Attorney Machado is? Yeah, he could make it tonight. Okay. Who told us? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Hector Angel, 
Yes. For if I hire three. But so you're the guy who owns the property. Yes. But and you're authorizing him to speak yes, on do. your behalf. I do. Then I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So go ahead, David. Tell us what we want to do. Okay. So this was a complete gut job of a three family. Yes. Um, on Manchester Street, and each unit's 897 square feet. Yes. I want to create a two bedroom in a in the basement, which has three egresses, one, um, one, two windows, 36 by 30, and a walkout into the backyard. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's an issue for the building inspector. But I understand what you want to do, so we'll do it, and we won't do it, but we'll listen to you. But I want to make sure that you understand. The building inspector can't. No, 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 no. no. You're here because the building inspector said, said you no. can't do it. Correct. But the things that you're talking about in terms of specifications and what's there, this board has zero authority. Okay. To this is my no, first no, time ever doing I this. I got it. I got it. So just sit back, relax. I just want to be clear that if this, and this is why my opening speech is five minutes long. I want to make sure that you understand who we are, what we have authority to do. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me you have three means of egress, the windows. That's an issue for the building inspector to tell us. Yes, no, so long as you can get a certificate of occupancy. If we grant it, that's between you and the building inspector. Okay. This is only, I want to do three to four, that's what we're going to listen to. That's basically so what please we want continue. to do. We Go want on. to basically take this three unit and turn it into a four, a four unit. Okay. Um, to alleviate parking on Manchester Street, we are planning on putting in a six car parking lot on the side yard. Because it's surrounded by four families, five families, and six families. Yeah. Is there off-street parking currently? Is there off? No, there is no off-street parking. Okay, there, well, actually, I apologize. There is a garage yep. that, that needs a new roof, but that does have Are capacity gonna, of two. Is that going to keep that good? Gonna keep We're going to fix that up as well. So you're going to have that will be used for parking, two off-street parking there. Correct. So you're going to have a total of eight off-street parking yep. spaces. Six but the street three. is also 30 feet wide. But a lot of the a lot of the multifamilies in the area park on that street because of its width. It says 50 feet wide. 50 feet wide? That's, that's a right. It says Manchester Public 50 feet wide. Oh my street. God! I got my tape measure out. I came out to 30. Well, that's that's so a public. That's right the public. Yeah. It may be 50, but it's built to it, 30. It's, yeah. it's pretty yeah. substantial. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and the parking lot. So the parking lot is going to be between the garage and the house. Is what you're correct. Actually, we're going to come off of Tashami Street. We, I had an excavator come in and, and clear out the entire um, yard. Oh, okay. So, so off to Tashami Street. Yep. And then both. we'd have to get, obviously get something so they could cut the curb and, and we can bring the driveway up. So the curb cut will be a city council petition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not zoning board. Okay. No, I understand that. I'm just just telling you. All right. No, no. Sir, I've got it. I speak this way about the zoning board because some lots of people come before us and think that we can. I'm the mayor with a, with a city council with a planning board. It's the zoning board of appeals. That's all we can deal with. I just want to create a, a nice a atmosphere for this for this property because the neighbors around us are all single families with their own driveways. Okay. And they come out. And it's drugs, currently so and it's you, currently right? a three. Three unit building. We're going to add one apartment, and the one apartment is going in the basement. That's correct. Okay. And there will be no mechanicals in the basement. If the board grants it, it's going to. Okay. Members of the board, any questions? Um, Good. Well, there's no parking designated on the plan, um, so we don't know if six cars could fit and condition site plan review they, turning, better, they don't have it uh, right but if we make a condition that it goes then it doesn't go forward if they correct can't Just, get it if you remember the one that we did the spring street the one the one that we just granted the yeah. five unit we said the other one if you have it yeah then you can have it if you don't yeah. have it then you don't yeah. have it yeah. right. Exactly. If I mean, I, I mean that's, that, that's the only. You can make it a condition eight, and it has to be subject to site plan review. And because it's a basement apartment, it's going to be subject to occupancy lot, issue yeah. from the building inspector. Mm -hmm. and, fire yep. and fire department. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it has to go through all of those occupancy reviews that is outside the scope of the zoning board of appeals. Okay. 
Anyone else? Any other comments? No. Dan? You know, I'm, I'm Joe? kind of in line with John. I mean, I'd, I'd be happier if there was some was idea the what the parking was going to yeah. be. So then it was it was measured out. But if we can we can cover it if we want to move forward. So. That's correct. Yeah. The same way we did uh, on that last one, the last week, last month. We see how that turned out. I don't know how it turned out. I, uh, anyway, is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay. Members of the board, what's your pleasure? Did they met the, have they met the standard uh, granting of a variance to convert? The A2 use allows the 3, 4, that's a multifamily, so that's not an issue. It's really mm -hmm. dimensional requirements. Uh, it's only got 5,277, but the lot is what it is. It's a pre-existing non-conforming anyway, subject to uh, the building inspectors issuing and every other department issuing. Mm -hmm. uh, is, but if you wait, say no, this no. Is a very, could this be a special permit continuation of a uh, non-conforming? The, the petition is a variance, yeah. uh, so let's do it with a variance. I don't yeah, I, mean, I just, just wondered. Yeah, no, no, I don't know. I, I, don't, I didn't do enough research on it. I looked at the plan, looked at the application, and said, this is where we are with it. But if we do do it, uh, parking has to be a consideration, and inspection for habitability from the building inspector needs to be a condition. Good. Yeah. Okay. There's no change in the footprint. No. no. Everything internal is, right? Everything confirm. everything is internal. Yes. So that's what we've got. Mr. Chairman, yep. I move that we grant the uh, variance conditional upon uh, site plan review uh, with special emphasis on the proposed parking availability. And uh, I think that was that if, yeah, so the condition being the parking availability, eight, eight Wall Street parking As space, proposed, if they can't get yeah. eight. Then well, two uh, in a garage, two in a yeah. garage, space. yeah, no, but a total, but a total of eight off street parking spaces, yes, correct, right? Yeah. Total of eight off street, but if they can't so mathematically, garage, six on the ground, if so. they mathematically, if they can't get it, I mean, ultimately, though, I mean, the parking on the street again is such a wide street, but if right now there's no, there's so no the condition, so the, the board's yeah. condition is yeah. you need eight off street parking spaces. If you don't have eight off street parking spaces, if site plan review calculating however you're going to put the eight unit. If you can't get eight, then you're not going to get the fourth unit. Okay. Fair enough. It's got to be subject to inspections. If, That's fine. If, if approved. If approved. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if the site plan review well, goes well, back. Well, yeah. <laughs> So that was. I already <laughs> hired the uh, people right. to come and start doing yours. it. Yeah. If, if we get approved on this, they're going to come in and start doing it anyway. Okay. So. With approval. Sub subject to the yeah. approval of the board, please. <laughs> yes. Right. So. Jim Corkins made that motion. Do I have a second? Yes, second. That was Joe Pereira. Yes. Joe Pereira second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. John Frank. No. John Frank, no. Jim Corkins. Yes. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Dan Dupere, yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. Chairman Assad, yes. So that this petition is granted with those conditions. Subject to site plan review. If they say no, you you may not have anything. It's all good. Okay. Good. I still have a thank you. Thank you so much, guys. <coughs> okay. okay. Agenda item number seven. Forget your phone. <laughs> it wouldn't have been all good. <laughs> He's a property manager. He knows better. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. So let's get back to uh, Manessa's Valaldo. Care of Attorney John R. Mitchell, 1951 Pleasant Street, map J111. The applicant seeks a variance to convert the existing three-unit apartment building with one commercial unit into four residential apartment units in an S single-family zoning district, waiving all dimensional setback, use, and parking requirements. Attorney Mitchell. Good evening, Mr. Thank Chairman, you. members of the board. John Mitchell. Um, 105 Bank Street, Forever, representing Mr. Menzies. And uh, we're here, this is, compared to some of the others you've had tonight, not quite as extensive. Um, this is a unit, it's one of the old storefronts on Upper Pleasant Street. Yeah. Um, in fact, there's two or three buildings around it where the storefronts the have already been, yeah, right next to Coughlin. Yeah. Um, a couple of the others have already been converted from storefronts to residential. Uh, it was used until a couple months ago Kind of commercial. It was a part-time um, 
real estate business, correct, in there. Um, office. Office. Mr. Menzies would like to, he lives in back, um, and if, there's two apartments on the first floor, two upstairs. He lives in the rear. He wants to convert this. He's a disabled veteran. Uh, he's moved here from Boston, sought out a property that, uh, you know, was uh, affordable to him, an area he wanted to live in that. And he's looking to rehab it. He's already talked to, hasn't applied yet, but he's um, talked to the veterans um, administration about getting some help to make an ADA compliant apartment. That's what he's looking to do. Have um, corridors wide enough. There's a chance he may end up more disabled. And he wants something a little bit bigger, uh, bigger rooms, wider uh, corridors, more room to maneuver, <coughs> a better bathroom, that type of thing. So it's going to be on that. It's going to be where the storefront is. Right so there. as I'm driving Pleasant Street and I see the storefront, that's going to be the unit. That'll be the unit. And then it goes back in the back. Uh, yeah. Odd shaped lot. It's very odd shaped and certainly very, you know, the, they did a remarkable job fitting that building on it whenever they did it. But, um, <laughs> It's, um, and that's what's going on. It's like that's a it. geometry project. But um, they did fit it on, and um, he's lived there for three years now, you know, wants to make that his home, and they're moving there after some renovations. So yeah. that's what he's asking the board to do. Okay. Yeah, it's in the S district, um, and I will just, I guess I, I probably talk too much from experience. But in this neighborhood, there isn't one lot over there that meets the uh, S district. And the planning board should probably rezone it. But uh, I had <laughs> when I was over family. there. When I was on that side, I went looking up and trying to find. And there's nothing in that no, district that meets three families or four or multiple yeah. anyway. So, so. Yeah, I think the you've, you're stuck with this building. You've got that uh, unit there at the bottom that was commercial use, pre-existing, non-conforming. So we're going to turn it into a residential unit that's more conforming to a uh, residential area. Um, it's really, so I don't know, that's, they're asking for a variance and looking for those requirements, the, the waivers. So any questions, members of the board, that you want to? Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay. Now, there's no on-street parking whatsoever. No, there's no, no one. There's and no. There, although the neighborhood, I mean, because the lots are so big, there's not the same problem like Manchester Street. Okay. It's, uh, there's, well, the there's parking went, generally. When I was, I was there a couple street. of times, um, it seemed that there was lots of on-street parking, yeah, especially on Pleasant Street heading yeah. down. And there's some big lots there. I mean, yeah. the yeah. house is big. Yeah, yeah but, there, but there's They're no... Old, a lot of stairs, though, in most of those houses. <laughs> especially on the north side. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what we've got. Motion to grant, motion to deny. Convert to a four, you three to four. I'll make a motion Remo to grant. Motion to grant, Dan Dupere. Any second on that motion? I'll, I'll second, second it. Uh, Jim's got it. Yeah. I don't know. So my left ear was working, so I got, uh, I got Jim Corkins for the second. Um, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, John Frank? Yes. Jim Corkins? Yes. Dan Dupere? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Joe Pereira? Yes. Chairman aside, yes. That petition's granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good evening. Good luck with it. Thanks. There were no. Good to see you. I'm trying to think. I can't think of anything. There any shouldn't any be any conditions to the site plan. There's no site plan, it's just a conversion. It's going to be. Which one's this person? Which one's oh. this person? Oh, all right. So, John, what's. It was different minutes. for every. So, an, First name, last name of the petitioner. It's Vivaldo. Is, is his first name? Vivaldo. Surname is yeah. Manessis? Manessis. Okay. Yeah. Tell Mary Jo, yeah, you've got to get the name straight here. Okay. Thanks. You reversed it? Yeah. Oh, well, it was me. But we, had the, but, we had, but we had the right street address, 1951 Pleasant Street. We had the right map and lot, so all things are good. Mm. It, was just, it was just a name. <laughs> it was just a name that when the decision gets done, yeah, if it gets recorded, wanted. you want it done properly. I don't want to be yeah. doing corrective decisions. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Is there anyone that signed up for citizen input? I don't see any. Okay. We have some minutes of the August 18, 2022 meeting that I was circulated. Does anybody have any additions or deletions? Move the acceptance or waiving of waive the, the reading, reading and acceptance, and acceptance, acceptance as second. written. Second. Do we have a second? Was that second. John Frank? John Frank. Any discussion on the motion? No. Dan Dupere? Yes. Joe Pereira? Yes. John Frank? Yes. Uh, Jim Corkins? Chairman yes. Assad? Yes. 
Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, Wait, is there one, any one, one uh, item? Of, go ahead, one it, item. Go ahead. It, it, very quickly. Go ahead, one bring of it up. the things that I've noticed is, is when I first joined the board, we used to be able to display the, the, plans. the plans on the screen. And that always, I mean, I just wonder with some of the comments Every that we get whether it would aid the. Uh, if they people see, if they in, see. in being able to see what we're talking about, and uh, it, I'm not making a motion that we do it, but I just no. But we can. Add, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Well, I we'll, I do we'll projectors. I do dozens of hearings on that side every year, and we always bring large plans set up on an easel so that people can see them. If yeah. people walk up and see, take we, a look we at them. have got the building projector. The the computer just plugged right into the. Uh, Thing. Where they're already scanned, uh, the plans are already scanned, and we do have copies. So, Nina, of maybe them. listening to Jim Corkins, maybe you can talk to the director of planning <laughs> and see whether or not a computer and whether or not we can go back to that. If we got the screen and we got the projector and we can do it, I think even with the renovation, maybe the technology exists. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But a couple of times tonight, it was yeah, real helpful. We have the plan and say, yeah. Yeah, the look people at are it. objecting to things that don't because they exist. don't. As a public service announcement, the plans are available at the <laughs> planning department before the meeting to review. Yeah, that seems uh, feasible. Uh, but if we can look at that, that may be good. Move adjournment. We had motion to adjourn. Is there anything else that we need to talk about? Any Second. new business? Second, Dan Dupere. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion on the motion? No. Oh. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. Yeah. Yes. John. John Frank, Jim yes. Calkins, Assad, yes. The Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River, September 15, 2022, is hereby closed. Thank you.